you were recently appeared on the ABC's Q&A, the most beloved conservative show in Australia. <laughs> yes. And of course, I'm being sarcastic, guys. It's a terrible show. They were com- there were some American-speaking commentators there who I don't know what their credibility to talk on these topics are, but it's zilch if it has anything to do with mail-in voting. Because I wrote, I wrote an article a couple of months ago. I've been following a young man named Tim Poole in the USA. He's not that young. He's actually 30, 35. And he covered, he's covered this for months now. Mm. The Democrats have been pushing universal mail-in voting, mm. and it's terrible. Now, let me give you guys a quick, quick education on this. Universal uh, mail-in voting and absentee mail-in voting are two very different things. Mm. Trump voted by absentee mail-in voting during the primaries early this year when he was voting for a Republican. Absentee mail-in voting is where you say to the Electoral College or to the people conducting the election, I want you to send me a ballot. I won't be able to make it on the election. Um, please, please send it to me. And then it, it's, the message is sent and you receive a ballot directly to your house. Other people don't know if you're going to get it. Universal mail-in ba- balloting is where the government in a, in a state, and often this is a governor that makes the decision, um, will come out and say, we're going to have universal mail-in ballot, where every registered person will receive a ballot to vote on. Now, you can obviously see some problems with this. What's that going to do? What's that going to stop people from voting twice? They'll vote by mail-in ballot and then in person. What, what, what if their, their, their signature is wrong? Are there going to be higher you know, uh, f- fault rates with it? Are they going to get rid of it? So you, this topic came up in the debate on, on the, the uh, Q&A on the ABC. And one of the commentators came out and said, there is no evidence that mail-in balloting is, is you know, fraudulent or there's a risk of it you know, damaging democracy. Mm. Do you see the sleight of hand in those words? She said mail-in voting. She didn't even distinguish between the two. Um, see, there's nothing wrong with absentee mail-in voting. As I said, Trump did it before in the primary. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look through some of the stats on this. Sure. Because, John, you were 100% right on that show, yet anyone watching would have thought you were being lambasted, mm. you're completely wrong, you don't know what you're mm. talking about, you're a, you know, a red hat-wearing hillbilly in Australia that just wants Trump to come in, which is completely wrong. And I'm going to tag this interview for you guys to see on the ABC so you can see how wrong they were. There is flatly no evidence to suggest that there's anything wrong or fraudulent with mail-in balloting. So we're going to start with this quote from 2012 from the New York Times. This will be the only time you hear me cite the New York Times. Votes cast by mail are less likely to be counted, more likely to be compromised, and more likely to be contested than those cast in a voting booth. Statistics show. Election officials almost rejected almost 2% of ballots cast by mail-in ballots, double the rate of in-person voting. Now, Democrats have been pushing mail-in ballots, and this is the result. So for those of you who don't know, in the US, it's unlike the Australian system. You have um, primaries early on in the year for the Democrat nominee and the Republican nominee, and then you've got the presidential election on November 3rd this year. So. NPR, which is a news outlet, did some analysis in the US and they found that of the millions of people that voted in the US election, 550,000 ballots were disqualified for a number of reasons, including fraud, the signatures not lining up, a bunch of different issues. And that doesn't even get us into the ballot harvesting, which is a completely different issue. Now, who were these voters? Well, disproportionately, for example, in North Carolina, let's get very specific, These voters were early voters, new voters, black voters, minority voters. That's, in fact, black voters in their case, they were rejected up to five times more than usual. And just so you guys don't, if you guys don't know, black voters in the US are more predominantly um, vote for Democrats. So that's going to hurt Democrats more than Trump, even though I think Trump will see a bigger black vote this year. But it's only like 15%. Democrats are getting like 50 plus percent of the black vote. So let's come to you, John. I need your guidance on this. Why are they, are they ignorant? Are they just, do they not know the facts? Um, or are they being malicious in this case? Okay, well, so I have been in and around the New South Wales Liberal Party for about 25 years. <clears throat> and it's well been and well publicised that there's a lot of factional internal corruption in the New South Wales Liberal Party. I think it's getting a little bit better now. But, Joel... That, fa- or those, that factional corruption was all built on ballots mailed out to people. Because 
what happens is if you're let's say you get a vote in something internal election someone will come round some factional boss will ring you up and say hey Joel uh, look you're part of our group uh, if you want to be remain part of our group you've got to sign your ballot paper and just hand it over to me and I'll vote for you and that's what has happened you know uh, countless times and that has propped up the the corruption within the party now what's happening that what the democrats want to do in america is that on you know, a massive worldwide scale on the on the american stage mm. so there is no question that the what you're saying is correct the absentee ballots are completely fine the universal mail out ballots are a, a completely massively open to corruption because let's say, let's say you've got a a, a inner city place in America with a very high amount of poverty and crime and destitution. And for whatever reason, there are places like that in America. And all those people will be, in one way or another, getting a government benefit. Mm. So if you're getting a government benefit, the government knows your name and your address. So all those... and But most of those people in that inner city hellhole aren't going to be particularly interested in politics, are they? No. They're going to be thinking about something that's going on in the hood that day. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so what's going to happen is every one of those uh, welfare recipients, mm. along with everybody else in the, in the state, mm. is going to get a ballot paper. Do you want to vote for Biden or Trump? Now, most of them aren't going to care, mm. but there's going to be some activists in there, and mm. they won't be Trump pro-Trump activists, they'll be Democratic activists, and they were going to walk around that, that place, and they're going to say, hey, everyone, sign your ballot paper, hand it over to us, and we'll give you five bucks. Yeah. Now, is that going to happen? I'm absolutely certain it's going to happen, Joel. Yeah. But I'm not losing sleep over universal ballots okay. for in this election. I'll okay. tell you why. And you, might, you may know more about this than me. Maybe. Who but knows? I we'll looked see. into it a few weeks ago, and yeah. I think that there's only nine states out of 50 doing the universal mm. uh, mail-out ballot. Yeah. And, I th and they normally, like, they're really hardcore... Democratic states anyway, like yeah. California and Illinois, I think. And Go on. Uh, the only one that I think that is a battleground is Nevada. Yeah. But, I mean, is that your understanding? This is my understanding so far. Mm. So I wrote this article in mid-August, and I, it's my understanding that a lot of these states have changed. So where it says ballots are mailed, that's, that's the equivalent of universal mail-in ballot. Okay. So you're right. There are a few states. I suspect it's more now. Um the absentee ballots that are allowed are all the blue states and where an excuse is required, um, right. it's all the orange states. So that sort of right. really clearly shows that most, this is going to be definitely, this is definitely going to be the highest level of mail-in ballots we've ever seen um, in an election in the US. Mm. Now, I've heard a lot of different numbers. I'm, you guys need to please fact check me on this, but um, I was sitting down with John before and he pretty much said he thinks it's about 30 million from um, in terms of the amount of people voting by ballot. I, I've heard something upwards of 80 million. You're, actually, you're probably right. Well, I think at the last US election, I think there was about 140,000 votes cast. Yeah. And I would say that, yeah, you're going to have probably at least half will be... Mm not in person this year yeah so so with with the um with the democratic party they've really been pushing this and it's sort of backfired recently because they i don't know why they're realizing this now because i've been saying it forever and if i'm if an australian 23 year old can work this out i don't know why they can't with the establishment they've got that mail-in ballots they will get disqualified and it's and because republicans have been pushing in-person voting mm. it's going to work very much in their favor that's a good point and I, I think they know this because they've started pushing out the narrative of what i don't even know what this word means a red mirage and the idea is that on election day or november 4th for us um in-person voting trump will win in a landslide i think maybe even a 49 state landslide but we'll see and then after that, just like in 2018, and I write this in my article, week will go after week, and every day they will be finding new ballots, 80,000 here, 80,000 there. In 2018, they found some in, you know, a stack in someone's car, a stack under a desk here, and next thing you know, it's no longer a red wave, it's a blue wave, a slow blue wave that we're calling mm. it. I'm very worried about it, and if there's any disputes, I know that the Supreme Court's going to have to break it. Um, so look, I'm thinking 80 million people, just so you guys know, 108, 160, about 160 million voted last time in the, in the 2016 election. And in terms of, just to put this in perspective, Trump won the last election by winning the Rust Belt with 80,000 votes. 
that's what it came down to, the skin of his teeth. He mm. didn't win the popular vote by mm. 4 million votes or something. So this is a massive issue, and that's, that's, why, that, that's, that's what changes my, changed my mind on the, um, on the situation on the Supreme Court. So you, can't, you simply cannot have one of the, the swing vote justice being very unreliable to conservatives. You, mm. need, that, you need to secure that. We, otherwise, we're going to have a constitutional crisis like we did in, uh, was it 2001? With, um, 2000 with Bush and Gore. Yeah. You know, I think what will happen is um, mm. <clears throat> if they get to about January the 20th, which mm. is when you're meant to have the uh, inauguration of the next president, yeah. then the Constitution actually says that it's decided by the House of Representatives. That's right. This is what Gore, Bush versus Gore should not have been decided by the Supreme Court. It should have been decided by the House of Representatives. Mm. That's what the Constitution says. And that's what I think will happen this time mm. if, if there is a dispute. Yeah. And... If it goes to the House of Representatives, Joel, it means Trump's won. Be- because Maybe. no, no, because even if so, even if the Democrats retain control of the House, yeah, the, there's there's 435 members of the House of Representatives. Yep. But they when if there's if there's a, a dispute about who's going to be the president, mm. all those states get to vote as um, one block. They get one vote. So California gets one one vote. Montana gets one vote. Vermont gets one vote. South Carolina gets one vote. So that's what. And, and there's there's just more states with more uh, Republican congressmen than there are Democrats. Now there might so in a state like in some of the very big states, there's an overwhelming number of, of Democrats, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So this is so. I don't look. I I think. People, before an, a, a, a hard-fought election, people often say, oh, well, it's going to be disputed afterwards. Very often that's not the case. Yeah. Very often there will be a clear-cut result, and I yeah. think that, that's what the case will be. Yeah, I'm familiar with the concept of the House of Representatives sort of working it out with, with the, okay. the delegations that go. Right. However, that is assuming that the Republicans don't lose that hold. That's the problem. And that's where I'm like, okay, what happens in? I think there was a, there was, it was a hundred, few, couple hundred years ago or something. They had a situation where they had to decide it that way, and they almost had a constitutional crisis. But they worked it out. They were the ones that worked it out. It wasn't the Supreme Court, so there might be something there. Yes. However, it is good to know, even because how many cons, con, um, unconstitutional things have happened, yeah. and it's gone to here or there. You want to have all yeah. <laughs> bases covered, otherwise we're going to end up with an impeachment situation, which is. You know, Trump was impeached on completely the wrong mm. definition of impeachment. Yet he was impeached nonetheless, and, yeah. that, nev- and that never goes away. Mm. Um, but look, that looked. I don't know if you have any final thoughts on that. But look, that's I, I've been very concerned about that, and that's something where I've said that it could trigger the civil war, and we might end up maybe even with the president Nancy Pelosi if we get to um, if we get to uh, January twentieth, which is the cutoff date uh, according to the Constitution. In terms of there has to be a new president. And the, the problem is, and I write this in my article, the problem is um, the way it works is it may not be the president pro tempore that takes Trump's, ca- Trump's place. It might be Nancy Pelosi if she's re-elected. If they count their, her votes before they can't count um, you know, Trump's votes, we mm. might be in a very bad situation for the well, Durham investigation. And Well, that's right. Yes, there's so much hinges on who, who wins this election. But, um, and I think this is why the left is fighting so hard, because I think that there will be some people in the Obama administration which will end up in jail mm. if Trump gets re-elected. So this is why they are fighting so hard. Yep. But look, I, I think it'll, if, if it, it only goes to the House of Representatives mm. if the Electoral College has not been able to um, meet and f- come up with 269 votes for either Trump or Biden. Then it goes to the House of Representatives. If that happens, Trump wins. Mm. So... Um, <clears throat> but look, we'll, we'll, look, but look, look, last point on the mail out ballots or sure. absentee ballots, the whole lot. Yeah. I don't like any of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. I really think people should vote on election day. Okay, we should have a campaign which should be a battle of ideas, and you really don't vote until election day. I'm sorry, it's an important responsibility. Yeah. Now, what if you're in a wheelchair and you've got cancer and you can't get to the voting booth? Okay, well. In that situation, yes, request an absentee ballot, but you've got to have some pretty good evidence. Yep. I don't like it. It's open to corruption. Mm. And it is the left-wing parties all around the world pushing it the most, which, mm. you know, they might... But the data you showed before, Joel, is very interesting, that a very, you know, uh, absentee ballots have a high rate of uh, disqualification, which, of course, would be the case. 
And so they are they punishing themselves? I haven't thought of that before, but it makes a lot of sense. There was one case, I won't touch on too much, but there was one case where it was so bad in the primary that they had to throw the whole thing out and said, we're a judge threw it out and he said, we're redoing this on November the 3rd because it was so you know, frivolously bad that it had to be redone. So <clears throat> what happens if we get in that situation? So the point is, it's delay, it's delay tactics. But yeah. we talked enough about this, but guys... Whether you agree with me or, or John on and the severity of this, what part of the data showed that the ABC commentators were right? Zero percent. I've presented nothing but facts so far. This, is not, this isn't, you know, and then I've told you when it's my opinion. There is flatly no evidence to suggest that there's anything wrong or fraudulent with mail-in balloting.